So this is the um, practice for the Sunday class. Um, start with the first, is the MCQ, right? Interpret choice question. So you do them relatively quick. Um, first problem we have this with mass m, radius r being negative an angular velocity omega about an axis that passed through the rim of the disk. So let's say this is the disk. And the axis is going to be through the rim of the disk, um, perpendicular to this plane. So that's going to be either um, into the page or out of the page. Okay, and then so this thing is going to rotate around that axis. The moment of, moment of inertia about standard mass is this one half mr squared per the standard for standard co. So it's asking to calculate the total kinetic energy. So total kinetic energy is going to be um, we have the translational plus the rotational, right? So for our bow component, so rotational is one half i omega square, and translational is going to be one half mv square, and again, t is going to be Try to rewrite them in terms of r. Our answer is in r square omega square. So we're trying to write them in terms of uh, r and omega. Here we have one half m. And then v. So in this case, we have a, a fixed pivot point. Right? And we have this ball, the center of gravity of the disk. It will be like one particle. Let's rotate around this pivot point. And so for that, we're going to have, um, it was one of the two cases, either ball rolling on with no slipping on the ground, or you have a fixed pivot point, you have a particle moving in a circular motion around that, and you can have V equal omega R. In this case, it's going to be V squared, so it's going to be omega squared r square plus one half i is going to be i here is going to be one half mr square one half mr square then omega square is the same then t is going to be uh, m omega square r square r and then here we have one half on the left side plus one over four on the right side and this is going to be um, 3 or 4, right? And this answer, 3 over 4, m, omega square, r square, and then lead you to the c. The second problem, you're trying to open a drawer that is stuck by pulling on the doorknob in a perpendicular direction of the door. Door, there's a door knob uh, pulling it perpendicular. Okay, then the door knob is the same height at the center of mass of the door. If instead of if instead you tie a rope to the same handle, so instead of you apply directly, you have a rope, right? And then you pull it perpendicularly, okay, so still perpendicularly. It's still 90 degree perpendicularly the same force so f equal f right the torch around the center of mass of the door i'm going to mess it somewhere here the insert is so it's the same same knob at the same r then f then torch is r cross f so that's exactly the same thing 
one point three, a woman holding a dumbbells in her arm being on a rotating stool. Assume the stool has no frictional torch acting along it. The axis of rotation. When she pulls the dumbbell inward, her moment of initial about the vertical axis. So that's like a person like this. This is rotating, I guess. And then first case you have a dumbbell like this. And then the second case you squeeze your hand and the dumbbells are gonna become like this. So it asks for, um, so it does spin faster, obviously, uh, conservation of angular momentum. It's a famous experiment, by the way. A Z component of the angular momentum, uh, that axis is the same, and obviously I just tell you. Um, and you reduce L equal I omega, right? This is angular momentum. So when when this squeeze down, so I is integral mR square times omega. When R decrease, omega has to increase to make sure L stay constant. Okay. And of course, um, there's also no external torch in the Z component. So you have the angular momentum is conserved, so L is a constant. 1.4. <clears throat> Figure skater stand on the spot with the ice, assuming frictionless and spin around her arm extended. So the extend version. When she pulls in her arms, reduce her rotational movement, and then Asia and her angular speed change, so her angular speed increase. Right, you have R decrease, so I gonna decrease, and so omega gonna increase because L is the same. It's the conservation of angular momentum. Um, the thing is, it asks for her initial rotational kinetic energy and the final rotation. Again, well, it's rotational, that's the main word. So, for rotational kinetic energy, we have this one half i omega square. Right? So, if you look at angular momentum, it's i omega. So this is one other magnitude, right? So if you if you decrease i, you increase omega. So let's say you decrease i by half, you're gonna increase omega by half. But in this case, omega is one order higher, so you have another omega. So it's gonna be if you decrease i, um, omega only increase a little bit here for l. But here, omega is going to increase double that, so it's going to become larger. So the rotational kinetic energy is going to be larger. 1.5, two cylinders the same size and mass rolling without sliding. So roll without, without slippage um, from an incline, starting from rest. Another A has most of its mass and concentrated at the rim. So A is going to be something like this. And B is going to be, what is the center? It's something like this, right? Plus B, which reach the bottom first. So obviously I equal to sigma mr square. And A have bigger R, right? This radius here to here. Be larger R compared to B because B obviously not very concentrated in the center of gravity, so R is going to be less. So for sure, A I A is going to be greater than moment of inertia B. So now we have um, moment of inertia. If you do energy conservation, T1 start at rest, so that's zero. U is the same, right? Uh, they both rolling from down the incline, so you the same, the difference in height is the same. Problem is T2, so T2 is going to be um, let's see. one half 
um, and we have the same m, right? And we square plus one half i mega square is rolling with our sliding, so you can just write um, mega is v over r, so v square over r square. And see so if you look at i, right? So um, a have greater in the moment of inertia than b, so a have higher i than b. Then if i is larger than um, over here is u equal to 2, right? u is the same, that's the potential energy. And so to keep u the same, if i is larger, then v has to be smaller. Right? So for a, I is larger, the moment of inertia is larger, so V A has to be smaller compared to V B. And if V B is faster, if B is faster, then B will come to the bottom first. Six, consider an ice skater gliding on ice holding a bar of sand that is licking straight down with respect to the moving skater. As a result of licking sand, the speed of the skater Blah, blah, blah. So we have T1 plus U equal to T2. And then this person is going horizontally pretty much. And so the U is zero. Right? There's no chain in potential energy. We have T1 equal to T2. And T1 is one half and V square. And T2 is one half. Sure. Right. Actually, never mind. I take it back. This is wrong. Because <laughs> this end is going to be different. The V is going to be different. So this approach is not very good. Like we also let the, the sand fall off of the back, so it also has external force. And we don't exactly know what it is. And the potential energy is too complicated. Right. So this problem should be approached from momentum. So let's say the initial momentum is going to be um, big M is going to be the whole mass of the person and sandbag and everything else. Right? And M is just the very small mass that the sand is going to uh, licking out. And V initial, right? And P final is going to be M, P final, right? So the moments of the person and send back and most of the sand and we final but also you plus there's also uh, our system also have the little m of the um the select sand out the cf and that's going to be m plus m and time vf and then conservation of say, the momentum you can have this equal this then m plus n cancel out and so vf equal vi so that's why it doesn't change another way you can think about this is let's say you have two people they are skiing right and let's say they're skiing to the same direction and they are holding hand let's say meter here and the whole hand in the middle now so this person is going to be like the uh, the skater and the lick sand right and then at some point if you release the hand the question is is this person going to move faster and just intuitively he's not going to move faster right if you you're moving together with someone else and you're holding the hand and then now that you release your hand you're not going to move faster and so that's that's the intuition of this problem 1.7 you have a herb gear h so h is this small here and the ring r so that's the big one you have angular velocity omega h so you have an angular velocity of the small gear and you also have angular velocity r, omega h, omega r of the ring, big ring. 
determining the angular velocity uh, omega s of the gear s. So determining the angular velocity of this gear right here. In this case, let's go ahead and construct the rotating vectors. Let's say this point is um, I don't know, h, this point is r. And then we construct the rotating vectors. Have for r, go r h plus um, that's going to be 2r right? e from h to r and take derivative of it go to vh plus 2r omega s which is what we interested in and then cross e h r huh, h r plus back anyways um, v of r so this one is a little tilted, so it's a little hard to see. What you can do is, you can redraw this gear uh, S over here. So it's like right with the axis, so easier to imagine. And at this point, point R, the velocity of R is going to be to the left, right? Because omega R is this way. So point R is going to be to the left. So this is going to be um, V R, right? And h, h is going this way, omega h. So point h is going to go this way. Right? That's going to be v h. And so intuitively, this one's going to rotate this way, right? Okay. Now we have that. Um, so for our v r and um, v h, if you notice. Is it's one of the two special cases I tell you, right? One special case the ball rolling on the ground, and V is going to be omega r, and the other special case is the fixed point. You have this little ball moving in circular motion, then the velocity of this ball is on so V equal omega r. In this case, it's going to be this special case in the fixed point, right? Because um, the rim R is rotating around this fixed point O. So we're going to have um, omega R times the radius, right? So the radius from here to here is going to be to here, right? That's going to be phi R. Phi R equal to VH. Again, VH is going to be the same scenario. So that's going to be omega H. Times uh, into here, it's going to be 3r plus 2r get omega s. This is where this picture come in. Pretty helpful. Right? So omega s is um, counterclockwise. That's out of the page, right? So out of the page, cross e h r. In this case, e h r is going to be something like this, right? Out of the page, current upwards, going to be to the left, and that's going to be negative. Omega s, and this is going to be uh, negative i, right? Uh, by the way, this direction for this is going to be negative i, right? Because this is to the left. And this one is going to be positive because the h is to the right. Okay. That's why I draw the picture here, too. This is so easier. Um, second mention. Right? So here you're gonna have um, negative omega r phi r equal to omega h three r plus two r. S is not plus it is minus. Can sort the r out. You're gonna get um, negative omega r phi equal. 3 omega h minus 2 omega s. And so omega s is going to be 5 omega r uh, plus 3 omega h. Right? And divided by 2. Okay. That's exactly what you get for b. That's perfect. 
that's gonna be the answer next one this one is a little more complicated for the figure so in the problem 1.7 at the instant determine the angular velocity of its attached arm OA so now we're interested in OA so we're going to draw a vector here here this is H this is going to be A right okay so our A is our H plus um, that is R E from H to A take the derivative the H plus R Omega S, which we just calculated, cross EHA. Oh, we're calculating. Um, wait, hold on, we're not calculating. Uh, oh yeah, right. I'm I'm calculating the velocity of A, and then um, A is rotating around this fixed point O, right? And so we can easily relate them because it's this special case. So we easily have. VA is omega A times uh, 1, 2, 3, 4R. Right? So as long as we can know VA, we can know omega A quickly. We are calculating VA. So VH, VH, we try over here. Right? VH is just omega H, 3R. I plus R omega S another direction um, omega S let's say over here omega S is um, counterclockwise so that's out of the page cross E H A so H A is going to be like this out of the page cross upward you're going to have to the left negative I and here, let's see, we're going to have VAA, or VA is omega H 3R minus R omega S. So omega A is going to be this divided by R. So 3, wait, hold on. Yeah, over here, not just that. Omega A is going to be VA divided by 4R. Okay, so Omega A is VA divided by 4R, which is Omega H 3R minus R Omega S over 4R. Get R cancel out. And so Omega O A is going to be uh, Omega H over 4, 3 Omega H over 4 minus Omega S. Okay, and then Omega S up there is 1 half. Omega F is going to be 1 half phi Omega R plus 3 omega h okay and then you time twos for top and bottom right you can have um uh, no that doesn't look right oh wait that is right wait hold on never mind it looks it's, it's about right so that's going to be six omega h minus phi omega r plus 3 omega h right. bottom you have 8 so that's going to be um, 3 omega h minus phi omega r over 8 and so that's going to be the answer so in that case like I know 1 over 8 so it's going to be either a or b in this case I have a minus psi I have a minus i here and plus i there, so this is going to go with minus i for a. So a is going to be the final answer.
Another thing is off by negative one, mainly just because it's going to be solving uh, implicitly. Negative one just implies the sign is going to be the opposite direction. 1.9 for the diagram below, motion of point B means the motion of point under point C to the direction directly underneath point P right here okay which one is correct point a move perpendicular to ca point a perpendicular to ca doesn't really have to right? it's not doesn't have to be perpendicular and not really perpendicular velocity and acceleration of c is only in the horizontal direction c in the horizontal so there's no way right it's in the vertical direction not horizontal not horizontal C is correct. By P, move parallel with the direction of the rod AC. So pretty much, it can't go. It can't have any component in the uh, perpendicular to AC because that's going to crash the point. Right? Crash this thing right here. It's going to crash the pivot point. So it has to parallel to the direction of AC. And D by P moves again it can't be perpendicular or has any component perpendicular to C A. Why is C? Okay, now let's dive into the free response. Um, we have rod A B is center plate with radius R. Radius R you have omega two. It is counterclockwise. Counterclockwise direction with respect to the plate which itself rotate at a constant rate uh okay this line is important rod ab stay in the vertical plane that intersect like ac so they do not have omega 2 on here and that's the problem you have to draw omega 2 and now o and that line explain why it's in the it's going to same plane with ac if it is ac you draw it like this move it down here here so this is going to be like roughly the plane that the um is the plane that a b is going to rotate in and AB is rotating counterclockwise. This is practically plane XY, by the way. So AB is going to rotate counterclockwise, right? And if you rotate counterclockwise in this plane, this omega 2, the direction of omega 2 is going to be in the Z direction. Right? Because AC is in this plane. Um, we have omega 1 is a constant with so a y axis. We know constant speed u, which d is moving, so this d is moving at a constant speed. This note is not important, that's just the global coordinate system. You can't really rotate the global coordinate system. Okay, we marked it's not important either. Let's jump to the problem. A total absolute angular velocity. A omega of um, A D is going to be a, a superposition between omega 1 and omega 2, right? So, what's the point? What's direction? So omega 1 is pretty straightforward, I think. So like this. So omega 1 is going to be in the J component, right? Plus omega 2 is a little more tricky. Omega 2. Um, so AB is rotating in the plane of AC. And AC is pretty much in the XY plane. And so if, if AB is rotating in the XY plane, so it's this plane right here and it's going to have 
Um, your tool is going to have a direction in the K direction. Okay. It goes part A. Also ask for the total absolute angle acceleration. For alpha AD is going to be um, to have constant rate. Omega 2 is constant. Omega 1 is also constant. So j, j does not rotate to the 0, plus omega 1, omega 2, um, omega 2 is a constant, k, k is this guy, right, this guy is going to rotate this way, and so if we rotate that way, uh, it's going to have omega 1, magnitude, and then direction is upward, direction is upward, and you cross with k itself, it goes to k itself, going to get direction in the um, x direction. Right. So oh, at this point you should do this um, quickly. Right? We, we've done this a lot in homework 6 I believe and it's also appear on the midterms. So that should be something doable quickly. Part B asks for determining the velocity of part D. So for B, I uh, want the velocity of part D, right? And so what I normally do for this kind of problems is I pick a point, I pick point A. Point A is, is um, a little special. Right? You can easily calculate its uh, velocity and its acceleration. And why is that? Because A is part of this disk, and this disk is fixed here and it's rotating at omega 1, right? So it's, it's one of the special cases when you have a fixed axis, when you have like this ball here, rotating, moving in circular motion, right? So V can be just omega R, then alpha, um, there are two kinds of alpha, there's a tangential alpha and there's a radial alpha, and it's rotating with constant angular acceleration, there's there's no tangential um, alpha, right? Uh, there's a, uh, not alpha, acceleration. There's no tangential acceleration. There's only um, radial acceleration, which is inward, right? And we can also easily calculate this with V squared over R. And if you rewrite this in omega, it's going to be omega squared R squared over R. And then R, R cancel out. That's just omega squared R. We also know the direction of the radial acceleration is going to be inward. That's going to be I. And then V, obviously V is going to go this way. That's going to be K direction. So that's, that's the, what I normally do. I pick a point that's this point A. But you can quickly calculate the velocity and acceleration. And then from that point, special point, it's probably also easy to calculate the velocity of D from point A. So you have RD equal to RA plus um, the length from A to D, right? And then E and D. You take the first derivative, we have VD equal VA plus, so here's a little trick here because L is not constant. So you have um, F from G, right? So U, E, A, D, plus this is F, G prime, so L, A, D, times omega, A, D. The derivative of E, A, D is omega, A, D cross E, A, D. And that's going to bring you V, A, D. As I calculated over there, it's going to be omega, omega 1, actually. Omega 1 times the radius r in the k direction plus u and then um, EAD. So EAD, you have an angle here, which is beta. So EAB. Can be rewrite as let's say 
goes at data is going to be um, in the i in the x component, right? And then psi beta will be in the j component. Let me copy that. Bring it down here. And then plus lad. Of course, omega ad is calculated above from part A. And then cross EAD, which is also now from here. Cross them, and then that's be done right here. Don't have to do more of this. For part A, B, C. A is a C. Determine the acceleration of point D. So for D, a D, right? Again, you take another derivative from this one over here, and that's going to be A A plus um, U is a constant, so you don't have to do U dot U, and then uh, omega um, derivative of E A D, so that's going to be mega A D cross E A D plus. Okay, this is where it gets complicated. Okay, so maybe uh, f prime v, so f prime is u, v is going to be omega ad cross ead plus f g prime, right? So what's the derivative of this guy? And that's going to be um, f ad actually is omega ad. Oh yeah, there is an f ad. Can't really do anything about that. You have alpha AD right, cross EAD uh, plus omega AD cross omega AD cross EAD. Okay. Here we know pretty much you know everything already. So it's a matter of why a really long equation. A D equal to A A, which we know over here, right? So that is omega one square times R in the I direction plus um, this guy and this guy are the same, right? So do U and then um, here we have the Uh, omega AD cross EAD. Let's get a copy from both. And then plus uh, no, LAD. And then alpha AD, which we also calculated above. And we cross with EAD. So EAD is this one right here. Shout out my mind. Shout out my mind. This is tricky. And then you can plus omega AD cross omega AD cross EAD. So this is top here is. Omega AD cross EAD, and then I cross another Omega AD. Right. There you go. Then that's going to be the super long equation. So the final answer for part C. Now let's go ahead and do a problem three. So three, you have a cart with mass M, you have four rollers, each with mass big M. That's a little counterintuitive with the smaller M and big M, but whatever. Um, 
the roller is not touching the cord, only the sender, where the connected rod. Which themselves are wedded to the cord, and their mass is already including an M. The coefficient of friction between the well and the wheel is mu. Initially, a stationary, so initial kinetic and potential, uh, not potential, kinetic energy is zero. Um, we want to know the velocity after F in D, of course, F in move D meter, so after some work force, right? Uh, force is FD. A suppose observe that the roller do not slip on the surface, so it's rolling without slipping. Where the total kinetic energy in terms of M, M and V. Then find the V cart. We have um, T1 plus U equal T2. Right. And so um, T1 is going to be 0. U is going to be, um, we have the work done, obviously. And then minus, let's see, we do have a tension energy here, right? So that's going to be one half kx square x in this case can be d square right and then equal to t2 is for this rolling this part a but is it, it is rolling without slipping so see we have one half mv square that's for sure uh, plus it's not this one is not rotating and so we're going to have 4 times, just counting the translational kinetic energy, we need 1 half mv square plus this the 4 times the rotational kinetic energy. We move to the left a little bit. Okay, so this is the rotational, so 1 half i omega square. And here we're solving for v, right? And so this one is rolling, um, one of the special games, right? rolling on the graph, so V is just omega R. And so omega here can be derived as V over R. So V square over R square, that's one. And also I is a moment of inertia, which I believe can be written at one half mv square. Oh yeah, right here, it is written right here. I go one half mv square, mr square. So this i is going to be one half mr square, mr square r square, four two then four two two. Okay. Now we rewrite this. Omega d minus one half k d square equal to one half mv square plus mv square and two mv square plus mv square so that is three m big m v square. So you group v square together. You have one half m plus three big m. So v square is going to be uh, this, this is this F, my bad. Uh, it's going to be FD minus 1 half KD square over 1 half M plus 3N. And then V, what they asked for is simply square to the plot. And that's straight up the answer for B. So for B, the wheels were locked. So it does not rotate, the car push forward, okay. So in this case, you have T1 plus U equals T2. Again, T1 is zero, everything is at rest. U is special though, U is, you have FD, that's the work done. You have minus the friction, right, FFD. And also minus the 
let's bring potential energy. One half kV square. T two in this case is one half mv square. That's the same in both case. But for the wheel, it does not rotate this time, so you only have the translational kinetic energy. So four times one half m v square. And for two, so that's going to be two here. And that the group v square, you're going to have one half m plus two big m. And so v square is simply uh, oh wait, also f. I don't think we can write that ff. ff is mu times fm, right? mu times n normal force and the normal force is what normal force is you have mg down right the normal force up and then it, it does not move in the y direction so this the sum should be zero and from that we should have the normal force going to be m plus 4m mg right here you should have mu times uh, 4m plus m times g. And so here v is where you're going to have fd minus ffd. mfd here is going to become mu 4m plus m vd minus 1 half kd square divided by 1 half m plus 2m. This is going to be the solution for V at this part. Actually, it has a V, so you can get the square root. That's about the same. Then, okay. okay, last problem. The, oh, no, actually, not last problem. Let's do one more. This problem. Um, we have the zero shell mass of big M kilogram. It's actually small m. I don't exactly know why conflict on this. It's actually small m. Trust me, small m. Moment of inertia is I equal mk square. Okay. That's the formula for moment of inertia. Uh, and then it is lifted by two cables, loop around itself. So the two cables, get two cables. Knowing that potential of each cable is TA and TB. So this is TA. And yes, this is TB. And then we know TA is less than TB. A sketch the free body diagrams. But A, you're going to have big guys and the small guys right the big guy and the small guys so we have the uh, ta and tb so ta is this way let's say this way on the edge so this is ta two ta actually this is one here and this one here right? on the other side it's going to be longer to TB okay. and then also of course you have um, MG that's for sure and one. the second one showed the uh, uh, angular acceleration IF uh, and also the um, direction, right? So this is um, MA. I don't exactly know the direction actually, so I'm just going to assume it to be positive, so that is uh, implicit. Let's just make it implicit. And I'm solving for both direction and magnitude of MA. Yeah, so let's sketch the body diagrams. B, calculate the angular acceleration. 
Tabra angular acceleration this is carry for F. Basically, if you um, it sounds a little tricky, but if you look at the variables they give you, they are very generous on the variable. And so you can easily do that just by taking the center point and center of gravity, taking the moment around that point, you analyze that, you're going to get, oh, by the way, um, just analyzing that variable, you have TA, just intuitive, right? TA here, the red one, TB is the tension in B, it's so pretty intuitive, right? TB is the blue one. R, though, you do not know what R is. The variable is the imposter one that is not given, even in the in the text of the problem, there's, there's no R. And apparently, R is going to be this one. Or, I don't even know whether there's a millimeter here, which does not make any sense because we don't even deal with unit. So that is R. This also this R just in here to here on the diagram. Okay. And then I obviously, uh, moment of inertia, and G is just the gravitational constant, 9.8. Okay, so now again, go back to B. We take the moment around oh. the red dot. We're going to have 2 TB. R, so that's counterclockwise positive. The negative for the clockwise of 2 TA to R. Equal to so on the right side, we have I alpha and that's counterclockwise, so that's positive. You're solving for alpha, so alpha is 2 or TB minus TA divided by I. And that's the answer. See, they're, they're very generous on the variable, that's why it's not too bad. See the acceleration of its mass center, the center of mass, what's the acceleration of the red dot? What's the acceleration? What's this A right here? Right. Uh, similarly, you do the force in the y direction. So you have 2TA plus 2TA plus 2TB. Right. And then minus mg downward, you're going to have and they upward remember this is uh, implicit so i actually don't know about the direction i'm solving i'm also solving for the direction so a is going to be 2 ta plus tb minus mg divided by m the direction is upward so that's upward is the uh, direction i set if this value is positive a is indeed upward, is indeed moving upward. If A is negative, you know it's going downward. Then if A0 is at rest, not at rest, it stays in the same height. Not accelerating. Guess what A, B, C. Also another quick problem. Um, I'm going to move on to the last one. This is more, this one is a little longer. You have ABC, the bar ABC with a mass m kilogram. You know what IG is, 1 over 12 mm square. That's the moment of inertia. Um, attached to a pin supported B, you have an M, is the mass of the sphere D. You have this, this D in the bar is moving at V1. You know B is the coefficient of restitution, and then these are the variables they want us to solve in. Okay, and then I'm gonna answer B first. So B asks for the input support B. Or is there any input? The answer is obviously yes. There must be some input as support B, right? Because you have an uh, integral FTT at A and ABCs is 
pivot is rotating around B. So with the, the inputs at B, um, A, B, C, you rotate around its center gravity, not B. So what I'm saying is, if um, cat right here, by the way, uh, let's say you have like, just put your phone on the table. Let's say you push um, on this side. Right? If there's no pivot point, there's no other input. You're gonna see it's gonna rotate around center of gravity. It's gonna rotate right around the middle. It'll be something like this. So that's the case. But this one is not rotating around center of gravity, obviously. It's rotating a pivot point B. So there must be some input at B to make sure that it's rotating around B and not the center of gravity. So that's the reason why there's support at B. And so I can do a demonstration. And here, look. I'm just going to confirm that, right? So this is my phone, right? So this um, pretty uniform, I think. The center of gravity is going to be right in the middle. And so if I push, let's say at A, this phone is going to rotate around the center of gravity, right in the middle. If I push this way, it's going to rotate around the middle. Right? If I push this way, and so it's going to rotate around the middle. Right? So that's confirmed about the um, why you have an input there. So let's say B is somewhere right here. And if I wanted to rotate somewhere not in the middle, but like on the side, on the edge, then there must be some input over here, right? So when I rotate like this, right, I have to keep my finger here. I have an input, and I feel the force on my finger too. I have an input to make sure that it's not, or else it's just going to rotate around center of gravity. Right? What about that? Going back to part A the input momentum diagram. See, that's why I do B first because it's a little counterintuitive. You do A and then go to B. So for A, you can do um, yeah, right. So that's not really good. Okay. Copy that here. And put some point in there. This is point A. This is point B. No, this is center of gravity. This part is going to be C. And this guy is going to be in the middle ish. The initial one is a graph equal to, right, and so there's an input at B, right? And also there is one that's not that interesting, like we don't exactly need to know what it is, because we normally take the uh, angular momentum around B anyway. And finally, The end is going to rotate this way with the i and omega, and g is going to go upward. So that's going to be big M V G. Omega. Okay. And for the bar, um, the bar here, moving M V one initially, right? Plus here, and go there's an input upward into graph dt. Equal and then finally, um, so this is going to be implicit. You can decide up or down, depend on your convention, right? Just pick one and depend on the values at the end, you're going to get positive or negative. So let's say this is M, V, um, this is VD initial, right? Which is equal to m v1 okay yeah. b 
uh, a sketch the impression momentum diagram to C. Immediately after the impact, determine the angular velocity of ABC and the velocity of the sphere. So the omega ABC and the VDF, the final velocity of the sphere D. Here uh, you just stare at the equation, but just stare at this immediately. You're gonna get the vertical one. You're gonna have negative m d one. Gonna be plus integral f d t. Go to negative m v d f. And that's gonna give you integral f d t equal to m v one minus m v d f. Okay. That's one, and then for this guy here, you're gonna do the moment around point B. So you have zero plus zero. Every is you're gonna make it counterclockwise, so that's positive. Integral f dt times the length AB, which is L over four. So yeah, L over four. Uh, okay, and then equal to i omega it has uh, answer counterclockwise plus mvg l4 that's also counterclockwise and this distance is also l4 now um, we can turn four on both sides four on this side four on this side to cancel out the number so 4 times 0 is 0, 4 times L4 is L, and here 4 and 4 cancel out, and, and then here we have a 4 over here. So that's what you get, here times 4 on both sides. Uh, now we have integral f dt L, we can, I want to make sure these two are equal. So we can take this L, divide it on this side. And then L and L cancel out. So now we can make this two guy equal. You know have uh, M V1 minus V T F, right? That's gonna be equal to four I mega L plus M V G. And i is going to be 1 over tail ml square. It is 4 times 1 over tail ml square, right? And then l cancel here as well. And that's going to be rate of that. Nice. And then 4 divided by 12, right? So that's going to be 1. And down here is going to be 3, 1 third. And here we have um, Vg, which is, also you can relate Vg with omega. So Vg is simply omega times L over 4. Right, so Vg right here. And it's a fixed point at B. Right? So Vg is just omega times the distance Bg, and Bg is L over 4. Now that we have this, it's going to be m l omega on both sides, right? Then 1 over 3 plus 1 over 4, which is let's see, 12 times 4, right? And then 3 times 12, that's going to be 7 over 12. m v1 minus v t f. Okay, so that's one equation. We have two unknowns though. Uh, VDF and Omega, which is both variables that we're interested in. And the second equation, uh, one more information we didn't use yet, is E. E, so before I do E, it's helpful to draw it out to make sure it's right. This is V1, right? 
So this is V uh, A initial is zero. And at the end, we have V A final. And this thing at the end is also moving downward. So that's it's explicit because I already uh, implicitly said it's your downward. So in this case, it's going to be more implicit. This is VD initial, so to V1. This is VD final. Right. Okay, so from this, you can construct E. So e is going to be a relative final velocity. So VAF minus VDF. Right. So it's a magnitude minus each other. So if VDF is this way, over here is going to be a plus. So that's just why I draw the diagram and to make sure this is positive. Right? So this top is going to be the difference between the two velocity. And this is, in, is it explicit. So that's why I only write down the magnitude. I don't care about the direction because I knew it already. So the top has to be positive because the AF has to be faster than the bar, or else the bar is going to crash the bar, right? The bottom is going to be VI, not RV, RV1. This has to be greater than zero. That's the definition of E. Now, um, VAF, you can rewrite VAF as omega. Omega L4, actually. Because look, we're analyzing point A, right? And point A is going to go downward, and it's from fixed point B. So you know you can use vehicle omega r on point A, and the distance r is going to be L four, which is given in the problem. So that's the case. Now we have um, two equations to a nose, right? Yeah, two equations to a nose. I'll just go ahead and solve it. So we have EV1 equal to omega L over 4 minus VDF. So VDF is going to be omega L over 4 minus EV1. And now I'm going to let this go down. You're pretty much done, I think. Like in, the, in the exam, you're done. You don't have to continue. But I'm just solving it here. M V1 minus VD, VD is omega L over 4 minus E V1. Let me open the parenthesis here. Go to M L omega 7 over 12. Is M V1 minus M omega L over 4 plus M E V1 equal to M L omega 7 over 12. Here you have mv1 minus me um, v1 equal to ml omega 7 over 12 plus m omega l over 4. So the left side is going to be mv1 1 minus e equal to omega uh, ml 7 over 12 plus ml over 4. And then omega is going to be mv1 1 plus n minus e um, over l times m7 over 12 plus m over 4. So that's omega. And then vdf, simply this. is VDF, and then we have Omega ready. Put it in. Right. So it's L over 4 minus EV1. And you get the answer for VDF. And that's the answer for this last 